Hi guys, and welcome to Davis Code Camp's last Minecraft lesson. Today, we will be creating a death maze. We will make this maze using filters through MC Edit, and then we will customize the maze with combination locks, one-way doors, hidden entrances, and any other deadly trap you decide to throw in. Alright, let's open up Minecraft, and go to single player, create new world, let's call this new world death maze. And the game mode, this should be in creative. Let's go to more world options. Generate structures, leave that off. All of this is good. World type, let's click on that once and go to customize. We're actually going to be using a preset for this video and we're going to use Tunneler's Dream. Click use preset and we can see that it's actually generating a lot of stone. That way if we dig down three layers, we're not going out of our world. Go ahead and click on done, done, and create new world. So this is very important. You need to actually play on your world to make sure that it generates the chunks. So I'm gonna stay here for one or two minutes and make sure that I have the proper amount of space to work with. Right now I have a good enough space to work with so I'm gonna go ahead and just escape, save, and quit the title. You can leave Minecraft open in the background because eventually we're gonna come back to edit the world that we edit with MC Edit. So open up MC Edit. This is just a shortcut. Once MC Edit is open, you should see a screen that looks like this. There's Death Maze, but if you don't see Death Maze, you want to go to Load World and just double click on Death Maze. Alright, I hit Q to gain altitude to look up. And we can see that we have our nice flat area to work on. So to create a maze, I'm just going to use my Select tool, which is the first tool we have, and just drag over a region that's so big. and this area is actually selecting the dirt blocks, so what I want to do is I want to make this come up a little bit so that people can't jump, o jump over the maze. And you can see that this layer of green right there means that it's selecting the dirt blocks, so I'm going to just hover over the bottom portion, left click, drag up one, and there it's selecting the area above the dirt blocks. I'm going to go ahead and delete those blocks, and we can see that it deleted all the grass that was in there, which is really nice. And if you go and click on filter, and click on the filter again. If you click on maze, it should have maze as an option. If not, you need to review previous videos to make sure that you have the maze filter. And I'm going to go ahead and click filter. All right, so it's created this maze out of leaves. What I want to do now is change it from leaves to something cooler. So I'm going to go ahead and go on the fill and replace tool while my area is still selected and so first I have to find what I'm transferring from, so that's going to be leaves. And it's not just ordinary leaves, it's permanent leaves. That's what this default filter does. So I click on permanent leaves, hit OK. And I don't hit fill, otherwise that would create a giant block of leaves. I click on the replace, or hit R. And what do I want to make this out of that's cool? I think nether bricks. There's nether bricks. And I hit OK. And then I go ahead and click on replace. And that'll replace all the leaves with nether bricks nether bricks. I'm going to go ahead and deselect just so that we can see our maze a little bit more. And indeed we do have a cool looking maze right here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sure that I have an entrance and an exit. So the opposite corners will always be solvable just by the Python language that um, was used to create this filter. I'm going to create this door five blocks high. Go ahead and delete those blocks. And then I'm going to go to this other side in this corner and delete blocks to make another entrance. That's five blocks high. Go ahead and delete those blocks. Sweet. So if I hit deselect, I can see that there's clearly an exit right there, and there's an entrance right there. What I need to do now is make sure that the player is forced to actually play in this maze. So to do that, I'm going to create four walls around the entrance and then put the spawn point in those four walls so they're forced to go through here. So to do that, I'm just going to click right here and create this uh, line and then I'm going to drag the selection tool up to the same height of the maze. I'm going to go to the fill and replace and I'm going to search for another brick just to be consistent. And I go ahead and hit fill. And that will create this cool extension of a wall onto the maze. I hit deselect and you can clearly see that it worked right there. And then I just keep uh, doing the process over and over cr to create these walls and box the player in. So. I selected my area, go to the fill and replace, hit OK, and fill. And there's a wall. Hit deselect to view the wall. 
better and keep working on the wall. So I'm dragging this straight line. I'm actually cutting the player off a little bit. I'll have to move that. So creating the wall section. Go ahead, fill and replace. Hit OK and fill. And one last time, deselect to see that that wall wor worked. It did. So I'm creating this straight line. Drag the straight line up. Make sure it's the correct height, and it is. Click on the fill and replace tool. Hit OK and fill. Sweet. So we've created this boxed in area that the player will be put in order to actually complete the maze. So I'm going to move the spawn point. Make sure that you right click on this and uncheck the spawn position safely just so that you can actually move the spawn point. And I'm going to right click to uh, move them into the air. You can actually just place them on the ground. It shouldn't matter. And then right click again. So that's where the spawn point is. I'm going to move the player in actually too. So move player. Uh, I'm going to move the player there. Move Mr. Math 3 in here. All right, so now everyone is forced into this maze. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Control S, and that will save this world that we've been editing. And then I can hit Control W, or I can just go up here and hit on, click MC Edit, and then go to close. I'm going to hit Control W because I'm fancy like that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and minimize this and open up Minecraft. It is very important that you uh, get out of the MC Edit, otherwise you'll be playing on a world that's trying to be edited, and it will corrupt your file. I'm going to click on single player, death maze, play selected world. Alright, so indeed I have been placed in these four walls. I'm actually going to maximize this so it's easier to see. And I'm forced into completing this maze up here. And then I can go in there if I want to, but I don't want to right now. Alright, so now that I have my basic maze set up, I need to create a really cool entrance. So to make a difficult entrance at least, we'll need the following items. We'll need a block of the same type of the maze. To do that, you can just middle click. And then I'm going to go into my inventory, make sure I'm on the redstone tab, and I'll need a lever, um, redstone torch, I'll need an iron door, and I'll also need some redstone. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and place the iron door. If I right click on this, I can't open it. The only way to open it is with redstone. So to create a cool locking mechanism. I'm going to place a few blocks to the left of the door, right, like this. And I'm going to put two levers on this, and the levers are going to be at least one block apart. Alright, so to create the combination lock, we'll have two redstone running from uh, the switch block. So if I switch this on, it'll power it on. Same thing over there. Very cool, it works. Okay, from here, we're going to need um, three blocks in a row, like, not like that, but like this. And we need um, redstone in the center up here, and then two redstone torches like such. And then at the very back, we'll need one redstone torch with redstone coming out of the back. And then this redstone path should lead back to the door. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead, destroy some blocks like this, and create an AND gate. So if I right-click on this and right-click on this, then the door will open. So both of these switches need to be down in order for the door to open. All right, so if I want to create a little bit harder of a challenge, I can add more switches. And I know that the only way for it to open is if these two switches go down. So the final step to this would be walling this whole area off back here so that the player can't actually get, get back there. So they can only see the switches and then the door. So that is the basic tutorial for the mechanism to lock the door. A cool trip or trick. Hold on, let me. A cool trick to make sure that it's always daytime. Actually, if you always want it daytime, is to dig one block down. Type in the following command: your name. Give Mr. Math three. 137 and just hit enter and then you'll get this cool command block. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and place this command block in the ground, right click on it, uh, type in time set, I'll do a thousand, that's in the morning, uh, zeros at sunrise, and I hit done. Now I'm going to go ahead in here in the redstone panel, give myself a daylight sensor, put the daylight sensor um, just right next to it, dig one block down right here, put a redstone torch here, and put redstone there. So now every time it detects that it's dark, it'll unpower 
this daylight sensor and turn powering this block which will power the command block so now it's always daytime super cool stuff all right so now we have our basic entrance to the maze and now we just meet, need to make a bunch of death traps so that's really up to you guys I'm just gonna show you some cool ways to make sure that they get trapped inside of your maze so I can actually make this so that this block right here is made out of netherrack or not netherrack but soul sand my bad so I'm gonna give myself some soul sand to make a one-way door I'm gonna place it right there and I'm gonna give myself half blocks so um, there we go. I'll make out a stone like so. Okay, so basically what this means is this is now a one-way door. I can get in once I get my combination lock correct. Once I get in, I cannot get out. It's a one-way door. The only way that I can get out is to uh, fly over it or break some blocks. The basic concept for this is that you have um, bricks that are just barely able to fit through so two blocks ahead of you and if you have soul sand you can't get in this way but you can get out this way so that's a one-way door and you can do this with other things too you can do it like with um, repeaters or something like that but soul sand is the most basic one so I can't go forward but if I go in here then I can get out of it super cool so we just made a one-way door entrance so once they get in they're trapped inside of your maze forever they can't get back out some other cool tips would be making one-way doors. So say I want, I know that the correct entrance is over here, but they don't know like how to get out. So I can place two signs, one on top of another. And I can place some art on them. So I need to go and search in the decoration blocks and just go to um, painting and go ahead and place a painting on them until I get it right. <laughs> it's a little bit difficult. There we go. So it looks like you can put paintings other places too to make it so that there might be other invisible doors. So eventually you can just go through like this and that's your invisible door. So I hope you guys learned a lot in this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.